Hi, my name is Dr. John Diard, and I want to talk to you today about cholesterol, how to navigate the new science around cholesterol. If you haven't heard, lots of new studies being published showing that you know cholesterol is not a direct indicator of heart disease, as we've been told to believe for the last 60 years. Somehow, this was accepted by the scientific community, and studies for the last 20, 30, 40 years were basically done not on what would cause heart disease, but what would actually raise cholesterol. If it raised cholesterol, it was a assumed that that would actually cause heart disease. Now we know that that science was flawed. In fact, some major studies, one by a Harvard researcher, Dr. Frank Hugh, took over 350,000 people and evaluated over 21 studies and found that whether you have the highest cholesterol or the lowest cholesterol, your cardiovascular incidence is exactly the same, that there's no difference. They found that people who have the highest cholesterol versus compared to people with the lowest cholesterol live longer. They're greater intelligence, better cognitive function, better memory as they age than people with the lowest levels of cholesterol. People with cholesterols uh, below 160 actually die a lot sooner than people with normal cholesterols or even high cholesterol. So it's kind of groundbreaking and shaking the building that we stand on. And uh, you know, another study that they did at the Lancet, all these are in, we did a whole series on cholesterol that I invite you to read and read all these articles and you're trying to get sort of caught up on, on what does it mean now with regard to cholesterol. In a study in the very prestigious journal, the Lancet, they measured people on a Mediterranean diet and a supervised low cholesterol diet. And the people on the, on the high cholesterol Mediterranean diet had died, they had a 70% reduction in deaths and a 76% reduction in cardiovascular deaths. So like, ah, the saturated fats are back into a point. Um, we know it was the cover of Time magazine that butter is back. So we, we are getting lots and lots of media feedback that good fats are actually good for you and good fats are actually saturated fats that we need them. Saturated fats are good for one particular important reason. They're saturated, therefore they're more stable. They, you can heat them, you can cook with them, butter, ghee, coconut oil, you can cook with them, they don't break down. In your body, they don't break down. Unsaturated fats, which we've been told for all these years is really good for you, actually break down, degenerate, become exposed to free radical damage way more easily than the saturated fats. And that's sort of the, the general rule. Not to say we should overwhelm ourselves with good fats, we have done a really bang up job overwhelming ourselves with sugar. So before we can get good fats back into our system, we must, and I've been saying this for a long time, get rid of the bad fats, then we can increase the good fats. Get rid of the bad sugars, increase the good fats, get, and start to increase our activity and our exercise, and sort of begin to try to match ourselves up with uh, some of the uh, ancient human practices that were very active and had a lot of good fats. How do you, what do you do now about all this? Well, you can get a blood test called a VAP or a different type of particle analysis blood test where you actually uh, measure the size of the particles of your cholesterol. So the total cholesterol number now doesn't mean very much according to the new science, but your triglycerides actually are an indicator. If they are high, then that's a direct indicator of heart disease. And one of the really simple tests that you can do is take your triglyceride number, divide it by your HDL, your total HDL number. If that number is less than two, Good studies support the findings that that's an indicator of low or less or no insulin resistance, which is blood sugar issues, and it means that you have really good fluffy particles. So in your cholesterol, your LDL cholesterol and your HDL cholesterol, we always thought LDL is bad, HDL is good. Well, it's not really true. There's good LDLs and bad LDLs, and there's good HDLs and there's bad HDLs. It depends if they're big and fluffy, which means they can't you know, do a lot of damage, or they're really small and they can penetrate the arteries and cause a lot of problems. So you want big fluffy ones. And, um, and that, when you get a blood test, that means that you're looking at the particle A uh, pattern of, of cholesterol. That's kind of the, the, the critical piece 
of the puzzle. You want to be looking at the right type of particles. You want to get a blood test that shows what type of particles that you have and make sure you have big fluffy ones versus small ones. And by changing your diet, your exercise, you can actually begin to make adjustments to the kind of particles that you have. And that's where the new science is. And one way to do that with your old blood test is just pull them out, look at your triglycerides, divide it by your HDL. If you're under two, you've got a pre you're in pretty, pretty good shape. Next time you go to your doctor, don't let them just do a regular screening of your cholesterol. Ask them for a particle test so you can see the size of your particles, and then you can get a whole lot more information of your cardiovascular status. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Don Diard. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at lifespa.com.